Hello my friends, happy Movember. Apologies for the uh, the dirty stash, but I had to do it. I've never done it before, this is the first year, and even though I'm not fully there yet, I mean, come on. So today's video is brought to you in partnership with LG, who were kind enough to send over one of their LG Gram 17-inch laptops. And what we're gonna be doing today is learning a new programming language. I'm gonna be walking you through the steps, the resources that I go to, and hopefully in one day, we'll get from never having written a line of code in this language, the language is Golang by the way, or just Go, uh, to having a decent beginner project done. So without further ado, let's uh, fire up the LG Gram and uh, I was trying to use a pun there, go to it. Let's get going. <laughs> All right, so I think the first thing that I'm gonna do is just straight up try and find the documentation that Google's released for Go. Uh, I think that's probably the best thing to do. So I'm just gonna jump in between kind of recording over here, recording on my screen, recording from the webcam. We'll see how we can uh, play this out. So first thing to do is just to download Go, get it all set up, and to get the Hello World program compiling and running, which is exactly what I did here. You can see we're running Hello, boom. In case you're wondering about the development environment that I'm using, I'm using Hyper. Uh, which is a, you know, alternative command line, a command prompt, and I'm using Vim within that. So now I figure we've got our Hello World program working, so it's time for me, I think, to kind of look at the basic structures which exist in any programming languages, things like variables, loops, so on, and just get a quick refresher on that before we dive into a project. So the developers of Go have put together this really interesting thing called Go Tour, which is essentially a walkthrough of all of the basic parts of the language up to concurrency. And you can step-by-step step go through and, and learn through examples and through exercises how the language works. And so here I'm learning about functions, for example. Uh, and you know you can see I'm going to compile this and run it. And you can see that I've created a very basic adder function, just copying what they've done. But they also give you these exercises where they say, okay, here's the problem, right? We want you to create a, a 2D slice uh, and populate it with unsigned integers. And we'll turn that into a picture for you. And so in giving you this exercise, they've, they've given you the tools to do it. Now it's like a little minor problem, 10 lines of code or something, not very hard to do at all. But it feels a little bit less arbitrary than just, all right, here's how you do a 2D slice or whatever. So it's a really well done tutorial. And I really like that it comes from the developers of the language because it means that it's guaranteed to be up to date and to follow best practices. Through the basics now, I think I have a pretty good handle on the syntax. But of course, you don't really know any of this from the tutorial. Uh, we're gonna have to start learning by doing because that's how I'd learn best. All right, so I moved over to the couch and we're gonna start actually applying what we've learned from this tutorial. And I think the best place to start is by doing algorithm problems. So an algorithm problem is essentially like a math problem that you solve by writing a little program. And you can do it in any language that you want, right? And there are websites which give you lists of these problems. And so the first one that I used was Project Euler back when I was learning Python. I went through a bunch of Project Euler problems with one of my friends. We had a great time. And now I use Leak Code, which a bunch of my friends are on as well. And the nice thing about it is that you can kind of write your code in the browser, check it against their test suite, submit it, compare against other people, and see their solutions. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not very good at algorithm problems. Like, it's hard for me to come up with these very efficient solutions in the moment. It's not something that I've really practiced because I definitely come from more of like a software engineering background of like, you know, building web apps and building, you know, things and not, uh, not solving problems efficiently. But solving problems efficiently is very important even in building web apps and stuff like that. So for me, it's something that I want to practice. Uh, so it's kind of killing two birds with one stone. I'm going to do a couple algorithm problems, you know, basically find out how naive and dumb I am, uh, which is fine. I mean, you have to suck at this stuff before you can get good at it for sure. Um, it, and so I'm going to do that, look at the real solutions, implement the real solutions and go once I've got my naive solutions working, or maybe I can come up with the real solutions as I fly. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, we're going to do a few problems and then we'll move into uh, actually building things, which is more of my comfort zone. So the first leak code problem that I was trying to solve is essentially they give you an array of these consecutive lines and the heights of those lines. And you're supposed to find the two lines, which if they were filled with water would have the greatest area of water. 
So I just implemented a really naive O of n squared solution here. It wasn't optimized at all. It's faster than 5% of solutions. It's terrible. But then I found an O of n solution by looking at discussion, implemented it, and boom, faster than 90%. Went from 800 milliseconds to 12. The next problem was just to divide two numbers without using multiplication, division, or modulo. It's just repeated subtraction, really. So I implemented that again. Uh, pretty straightforward, pretty standard, not the fastest thing ever. You can go much better with, you know, bit shifting and stuff, but good enough. Okay, so now that I've practiced some leak code for a bit, uh, I'm gonna hit a personal little project here. And the project that I wanna build here is very simple, but I think it's a good idea kind of getting started because Go becomes really powerful when you start connecting it to networking, right? So when you start doing these uh, different requests, posts, skits, whatever, interacting with APIs and so on. So I think it makes sense to start with a very basic form of that. And I don't think I'll get much further than a very basic form today, given that the sun's already going down here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and build a personal dashboard of some variety. So I'm gonna hit a bunch of APIs. I'll hit a weather API, um, maybe the Gmail API, see if I have any unread messages, stuff like that. And I'm gonna compile a bunch of information, which is just useful to have in one spot, thus building a dashboard. What this is really gonna functionally do though, is it's just gonna give me some experience with working with requests within Golang. And once you have that idea of how requests work, then you can start to build out the back end of applications and so on and so forth. So I found this really cool weather API that AccuWeather puts out there. And in particular, I was drawn to this 12 hours of hourly forecast, because to be honest, I only look at hourly forecasts in general. And so I figured, hey, I'm gonna hit that endpoint. So that's what I started to do. I started to look into the HTTP library and boom, you can see there that we're getting this huge JSON blob from the API. So now it's a question of, okay, how do I make my program understand this blob? So you have to create these structures which represent the data that you're looking for, right? So in particular, I'm interested in, uh, you know, what's the temperature at this hour? What's the time? Because you need to know which hour it is, right? What's the percentage of, of precipitation or whatever you want to call it? Um, and you can see I'm outputting these things now nicely formatted to the command line. But I thought, hey, I don't really necessarily want to be using a command line tool. I'd rather have a server. I'd rather be able to look at this in the web page. And so that's what I looked at next was how do we create a very bare bones web server which will serve this information but on a web page. And so this is what I'm trying to figure out here. I'm saying, okay, you know, how do I make a server? How do I put it onto a certain port locally and so on. Not hard in Go, very easy to do in Go actually. It's like many fewer lines of code than I anticipated. So you can see I'm going to my web browser and that same information showing up. But it looks kind of ugly. So the next thing I was looking at, I was like, okay, how do I make it recognize HTML tags? Just needed to pass in a header and you'll see in a moment, we have a header. So looking good. Now I just need to put those lines into a list and we're pretty much done with the weather. So that's what I'm doing here. Just creating an unordered list making every line a list item. We'll refresh, look at that. It's beautiful. All right, so it is now 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m. And I've been working on this since 12. So I'm about six and a half hours in, not working on this one little project, but working on learning the language as a whole. Uh, and so far we learned the basics by going through the tutorial. Then we hit leak code, did a couple problems there. Got a little bit more comfortable with the syntax. And then we started working with this AccuWeather API, getting data for the hourly forecast in Montreal. And then I built a little server around that. We have a, a basic little web page that just, you know, shows the forecast for the next 12 hours. And every time you refresh it, it'll update, assuming that the server's running which is not right now. <laughs> so what did we learn? Well, first of all, Go is a really cool language and I wanna use it more. I'm still not very comfortable with it at all. It's totally unrealistic to think that in like seven hours you could become comfortable with a language, like fully comfortable with a language. Um, just not the case. But I am becoming a little bit more comfortable with the, the way that the programs are organized and that, by which I mean like the structs and the way that typing works in Go stuff like that. And also the networking side of things, I think that it does a really good job. And so with that, I'd like to thank the sponsor of the video, LG. I did this entire project, all the screen recordings, everything you saw was on the LG Gram. This is a crazy laptop. It weighs less than three pounds and has a 17 inch screen. And the screen is beautiful. So from a programmer's perspective, it's very nice to be working on because you can do a split screen like I have right here where you have your web browser and you have a code editor. That's not something you can usually do on laptops. The other thing that I like about this laptop is, is simply the keyboard. 
usually on very thin light laptops like this, they compromise on the keyboard, right? You're looking at butterfly switches, stuff like that. Whereas here, the chiclet style keyboard, you actually get feedback from, it's nicely spaced, the keys feel good on your fingers. It's something that you could spend you know, extended periods of time typing on, and I know because I have done it. So if you're looking for a laptop, whether it's for schoolwork, whether you are a programmer, whether you just are in the market, I would highly recommend you check out the LG Gram 17 inch laptop. There's a link in my description, check it out. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. I enjoyed learning this, this language, or starting to learn it, I should say. Learning the language, it sounds like you've mastered it or something, which nobody, nobody could ever master a programming language in seven hours, right? That's something that would take thousands and thousands of hours, at least. But yeah, totally a day well spent for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. If you wanna check out the code that I wrote, uh, messy though it may be, feel free to hit it up. GitHub in the description. Uh, you can also find my dot files there for my development environment, stuff like that. All right, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to like it, leave a dislike, leave a comment, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you next time.